In Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30, from the Message Version, it says this. Uh, Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. A first sort of question, really uh, not for discussion, is do you have any bad habits? I'm sure we think of that term habits, and yes, I've got a few. Things that you do without thinking, but uh, just part of your life. Well, do you have any good habits? Let's focus on that. Uh, It may be making a cup of coffee every morning. Uh, The things you do quite often that make life work for you. Today we begin a season in life groups exploring the habits of Jesus. These everyday practices of Jesus demonstrated his closeness to the Father and a closeness that he encouraged his disciples uh, and all who would follow him to enjoy too. The habits or practices of Jesus are sometimes called spiritual disciplines, but I know that's a word with both negative connotations and it doesn't sound quite as lifey or exciting as walking with God is. But we all know habits, things that fill our everyday But these being things that fill our day with an awareness and connection to God and each other. Habits such as, but not limited to, scripture, silence and solitude, daily prayer, study, Sabbath, simplicity, play and recreation, service and mission, care for the physical body, looking after our emotional health, family, hospitality and community. We could add confession, fasting and celebration, an array of opportunities through which to keep in step with God and grow up in Christ. All these habits are practiced with the Helper, the Holy Spirit, God with us, who equips and encourages us to make all the more possible the way of Jesus. You see, these habits were infused into Jesus' life. A life that Jesus straightforwardly invited others to follow, as noted in his call to his first disciples, follow me. So Jesus' disciples walked with him, worked with him, and watched how he lived. They learnt his way along the way. And so too for us. As we see uh, through the life of Jesus, these things demonstrated, uh, a follower of Jesus is called to imitate Jesus' way, to then integrate them into their lives and innovate how to read the Bible uh, in today's world, for example. Uh, And as they watched him pray, often, his disciples would have asked him to teach them to pray, Luke 11, verse 1 as they asked him about his parables, uh, so they could know a bit more. An example of that is in Luke 8, verse 9. They saw what forgiveness looked like and asked how many times they should forgive people. Matthew 18, 22. How they might provide for the needs of others. Uh, What a truly generous life looks like. How to apply God's word to everyday life. And how the whole of scripture pointed towards God's rescue. But most of the time, Jesus' followers watched Jesus' way. The beautiful things that keep people aware that God is with them and for them. See, Jesus was all about abiding, abiding with God. And we see that in John 15 as he encourages his followers to do the same. And these habits, if you like, act like trellis, uh, what's underneath every thriving vine. And the trellis provides structure to hold up the vine so it can grow and bear fruit. The purpose of the trellis isn't to grow straight vines, but to make the growth of fruit possible. The habit is not the end goal, but the means to an end. A set of habits to set up abiding as the central pursuit of your life. Habits that organise your life around the practice of the presence of God. To work and rest and play and eat and drink and hang out with your friends. To run errands and catch up on the news all out of a place of deep, loving enjoyment of the Father's company. The hard truth 
is that following Jesus is something you do, a practice as much as a faith. And at their core, the habits of Jesus are about relationship with the God he called Father. And all relationships take time. The habits of Jesus are in no way some legalistic guilt trip. This is an invitation to the life we actually ache for. A life that can be found only by moving through the world shoulder to shoulder with Jesus. And that's what it means to take upon us that yoke of Jesus. He's our other yoke fellow and he takes the weight and the strain. We just need to walk shoulder to shoulder with him. And so we're going to pause there and break out for a bit of discussion or trying to ponder some of the questions. Um, what maybe what might encourage you to imitate Jesus? What might encourage you to imitate the habits of Jesus and why? Maybe you could also ask the question, what might discourage you about incorporating the habits of Jesus into your everyday life? And why is that? Why may you be discouraged by that invitation? And lastly, in any human relationship, we work at it. What do we need to do to feel connected to somebody? Is that any different from how we feel connected to Jesus? Take some time now to discuss those among yourself and then we'll come back to the second part of our look at the habits of Jesus. So hopefully you had a good conversation there about what it means to be an apprentice of Jesus, to learn from him. Uh, and as we explore the habits of Jesus, I want us to go a little further back to highlight the value of these habits as we follow Jesus in the rub of everyday life. And for this, we'll take a snapshot from the life of the prophet Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 12, he's uh, issued a complaint to God uh, as he's looked around and seen that he's actually not being encouraged that much by um, the rest of his culture, by his people who are doing their own thing, going their own way and not following God. And God's reply to Jeremiah is this, Jeremiah 12 verse 5. If you have raced with men on foot and they have worn you out, how can you compete with horses? If you stumble in safe country... How will you manage in the thickets by the Jordan? How do you compete with a horse? Now there's a question you probably didn't expect for today. Well, much like the fable of the tortoise and the hare, slow and steady wins the race. Jeremiah wasn't going to get an easy life, uh, riding life. He's looking around and seeing how people prosper that don't love God. He's weighing up the benefits the world affords to those who are selfish and look after number one. He's not finding the encouragement, he'd love for his devotion to God and God's ways. And God is clear. In the face of Jeremiah's outburst of how long, God's reply is, how will you compete? Basically, God told Jeremiah that life is difficult, especially when you're committed to following him. And asked him if he was going to throw in the towel at the first wave of opposition. Are you going to retreat when you discover that following me involves more than eating three meals a day and having a warm bed to sleep in at night. Over the next eight or nine chapters, we have revealed a strong conflict between Jeremiah's natural inclinations and his deep sense of vocation to deliver God's message to the people and walk closely with him. Jeremiah wanted to be able to compete with horses, and so he learned to do this. He needed to slow down, to develop a long obedience in the same direction. Those who regularly hike the hills and mountains have a slow, persistent, steady, unhurried step, while inexperienced hikers energetically hurry along and soon have to stop exhausted from the climb. Ensuring he had a close walk with God was key for Jeremiah. And the result of the hard training of chapters 13 to 20 can be seen in Jeremiah's fortitude right through to the end of a career where he faced little, if no encouragement from anyone else. But why are we here? Well, Eugene Peterson says, the world is no friend to grace. 
A person who makes a commitment to Jesus doesn't find a crowd immediately forming to applaud their decision or old friends spontaneously gathering around to offer congratulations or advice. Ordinarily, there is nothing hostile but an accumulation of puzzled disapproval and agnostic indifference. All that constitutes, nevertheless, surprisingly formidable opposition. Something Jesus endured himself and warned his disciples about. You need to put things in place that help you remember God is with you and for you. Opportunities to hear from him and talk with him often. Occasions to delight in who he is and what he is doing. Opportunities to... Um, to serve and to, uh, and to come alive in the midst of people and place. Things in your everyday that remind you who God is and who you are in Christ. Things in place to help us compete with horses. The habits of Jesus. But don't be hard on yourself. That's not the way of grace either. But to be yoked with Jesus as I mentioned earlier, means to be yoked with Jesus. He will take the strain, but we need to walk beside him. The habits of Jesus help us to do just that. This is not an exhaustive list, but some of the main players that we'll be exploring in more detail over the coming weeks. But don't feel overwhelmed. The key is to start small and try to make them habits. For example, in, with the Bible, it, it would be better for you to read the Bible for five minutes per day uh, or five minutes for several days in the week than to read it once a month for an hour. The key word is habit. So as we break off now into a discussion again, I want us to maybe think about some of the questions uh, off the back of this too, is what might the value of these habits be? And secondly, do you currently find any of these habits helpful? Um, and then in what way? And then lastly, how do you think integrating Jesus's habits will help you, like Jeremiah, compete with horses? If you want to go a little deeper, either together or on your own, you may want to look at your intention, because um, intention is really important. Uh, we don't take on these habits to please God, but encounter God. So how might that encourage you? How might it alter your current approach to these? Is there something mentioned today you'd like to pick up and run with? Let's pray together. Loving Father, I want to thank you for um, the life Jesus uh, put on display for us to follow. For the help of your Holy Spirit in living this way too. So help us as we seek to make much of you in our day. Come alongside us by your Spirit and show us your way. In Jesus' name, Amen.